Hey everyone, welcome back to BDG Reviews. It's the last night of the 31 Days of Horror. So, like with every year, I try to do something a bit, you know, like, a little bit different for the last episode. Not just a single review. I've done, Hell, not Hellraiser, um, done a Exorcist Retrospective one year. I did, I think, a Friday the 13th one and stuff. So, this year I decided to go with, these are my top 10 Asian horror films that I, I just I just love these films all together. And you know they just need more talking about, honestly. And also today is the draw for that copy of the sadness. I got all the ballots in there, so I'll be picking one at the end of the video. So we're gonna start this off with an honorable mention. Cause this movie it is great. I love it. But it it's it it's it's like neck and neck with number ten, so that's uh, brutal by uh, Takashi Hirose. Uh, this is films from Japan, released through Unearthed Films, and this is how can I put it? This is the a perfect example of like. It's a love story about mutually assured destruction. Essentially, you have a serial killer who's a guy, and you have a serial killer who's a woman, and they end up crossing paths, and, you know, it, it, it's sort of a love story. Still a better love story than Twilight. Great gore, great everything. This is a solid movie. The only, like I said, the only reason it's an honorable mention is is I like the other one just a little bit more. But I definitely recommend Brutal, if you haven't seen Brutal. Um, the name tells you what you're getting. It's a Brutal film. And uh, as long as you're cool with that, it's a really enjoyable Japanese film. And uh, it's just good. And honestly, um, Unearthed do some great releases. So there's actually, I think... Two more unearthed in this um, in this list. So yeah, brutal. It's nine out of ten. All of these are like either eight out of eight, nine, eight, nine or ten out of ten for these. So yeah, brutal. Nine out of ten. So for number ten, we have Spider Forest by Song Yo Gon. This is a South Korean film, and uh, you got this guy in the. Uh, He's like in the in the woods, and like he comes upon this house, and there's uh, you know, there's like a body in the house and everything, and he's chasing after a guy. Then he gets hit by a car, and all this like weird stuff happens. It's a really solid movie that nobody talks about anymore. Um, hell, I don't think people talked about this when it came out, but it's really creepy, really very atmospheric. And I love this movie. I really do. Really. I mean, somebody, I'm just saying, somebody needs to jump on these old Tartan Asia Extreme releases and get them re-released on Blue. Because uh, Spider Forest, I would love this on Blu-ray. Just saying. So, for rating, 9 out of 10. Really solid movie. For number 9... This is one from Unearthed Films again. And that is Black Sun, The Nanking Massacre by T.F. Mao. This is actually um, Men Behind the Sun 4. It's weird. It's Men Behind the Sun 4, but it's actually Men Behind the Sun 2 because T.F. Mao, who did Men Behind the Suns 1, didn't approve either Part 2 or 3. And this is his direct sequel it's weird. This movie is... I, I honestly believe this. I think everybody should have to watch this movie. Simply because it shows what happens when you stop seeing the enemy as human. And you just see them as the enemy. Uh, basic plot of this is it's all about um, the, the Nanking Massacre. Now, some people say the Nanking Massacre never happened. I'm not one of those people. I believe it happened. You know, 
99% of people know that it happened. The Japanese Imperial Army in World War II essentially wiped Nanking off the face of the earth. You know, it is what it is. History's history. Um, you know, but but this really is a good example of of like I said, just just showing like what happens when you stop. That, that's the wrong way up. I'm stupid. <laughs> of, of just showing what happens when you stop seeing the enemy as human, and you just see them as like the enemy slash like you know nothing. I mean, let's be honest. Um, this happens in every war. It's a child of war, is atrocity, and um, if you don't learn from it, you're doomed to repeat it. So, just saying, great movie, very hard watch. This isn't for everyone, I'll say that, um, because these are true events. They may, they do an interesting thing, is like they'll have like well, if you see that picture right there on the front. I can't remember if that's actually from the movie or if that's the actual picture, but they have, like, this scene recreated, and what they do is, like, um, they'll be recreating the scene, and then they'll show, like, an actual picture of the actual event, and I, th I think that might be the actual picture, I'm not sure, you know, so it really kind of drives home that this is a real thing. Great movie, though, honestly, um... Yeah, I get the feeling, you know, like, uh, if you, uh, if you join the army, you should have to watch this film. Just, just as, like, a cautionary tale. So that was number nine. Number eight is Ganjam Haunted Asylum by, uh, Jung Bum Shik. Shik. It's a South Korean horror film. Well, obviously. Um... Essentially, you got this group of, like, they're, like, um, online influencers. I hate that word. But they decide they're going to investigate Ganjam, which is, a like, a, I think it was a, an asylum. Was it an asylum? Yeah, it was an asylum in uh, Korea. And um, it's just a genuinely scary movie. Really atmospheric. Really good you know, use of effects and everything. I'm actually going to be doing a video sometime coming up soon. Um, it'll actually be the second of my head-to-head -head series where I'm going to compare this to uh, Hillstadt and Haunted Hospital. Because essentially they're the same movie. So, all in all, really solid, really creepy. This is an 8 out of 10 for sure. You can't go wrong with it. Really good flick. That was 10, 9, 8. Number 7, we have uh, Tetsuo, the Iron Man. This particular release is from Third, uh, Third Window Films, the British company. Uh, I never did bother getting the the Arrow box set. Is it Arrow? Yeah, I think it was Arrow. I never, I never picked that up, but this just has uh, Tetsuo and Tetsuo 2, so I'm fine with that. Um... What can you say about Tetsuo by uh, Shinya Tsukamoto? It's like the birth of like cyberpunk horror. You got a guy who's like a metal fetishist. He like sticks metal in his body and then he starts turning into an Iron Man, essentially. And great, great body horror. Great, just black and white. Really... Just a really solid movie, honestly. And, um, you know, with the Arrow box set, you know, we're, more people are getting exposed to it, but it's just a shame it's taken so long. Yeah. Good flick. Uh, for rating, that's uh, 9 out of 10. Next up, we have A Record of Sweet Murder by uh, Koji Shiraishi. This is also from Unearthed Films. This movie is awesome. The gist of this movie is you got like this guy. Uh, I don't know how much I want to give away. Let me just check the, you know. Ooh. 
Okay, the, the gist of it is this, like, um... You, you got this, this person escapes from, like, a mental institution, and they've killed a lot of people. And they end up, uh, with this, like, there's, like, a South Korean uh, journalist and Japanese cameraman, and they're, like, just, they're filming stuff, and they end up in... Hold on. Hmm. Okay. So this is like actually a Japanese Korean um like split release. Nikatsu and Zoa films, so that's kinda cool. Um You got this cameraman, he's filming stuff and everything. I, I really don't want to go into spoilers for this one because the ending goes in a completely well, I say the ending goes in a completely different direction from the rest of the movie. And the cover's a little bit of a spoiler, but this one has to be seen to be believed. Just stop what you're doing, find a record of Sweet Murder, and watch it, because it is really good. For rating, this is 9 out of 10. Again, really solid release. So that was 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Number 5 is probably the, the this is the first uh, 10 out of 10, and that is uh, Parasite by uh, Bong Joon-ho. What do you need to say about this movie? It's just, it's, the idea in it is creepy. More creepy than the actual movie itself. Just the idea of, like, some, like, like essentially a family, like, living in someone else's house and they don't know. It's a really good movie. Like, there's a reason... I'm pretty sure this won some awards, didn't it? Uh, I can't remember what. I, I'm pretty sure this won some awards. Um, deservedly so. Let's let's put it this way. I got this Blu-ray. There is a Criterion Blu-ray, so that kind of tells you all you really need to know. That it was worthy of the Criterion Collection. So, yeah. Great film, great acting... Beautiful cinematography. This is a 10 out of 10. I love this movie. Number four. Uh, this is another 10 out of 10. And that is Shudder. The original Shudder. Not the remake. Though honestly, um, I will say the remake isn't as bad as people make out. But it's not as good as the original. Uh, South, uh, South Korean or Thailand? Uh, Thailand. Uh, let's see if I can see how to pronounce this guy's name. Park Poon Wong Poon. He directed it, apparently. Um, it's a ghost story. And it's just all around creepy and atmospheric as hell. And it's it's just a good flick. It's a really good flick. And... I mean, hell, that cover alone kind of gives you, you know, a hint of what you're getting. And it's perfect. This this is supernatural horror done right. And um, it's a 10 out of 10. Great flick. Next, we have an all-time classic from uh, Kaneto Shindo. This is Onibaba. This particular release is from Eureka. Um, I think... I think Criterion have the 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 release in like uh, U.S. and Canada. I'm not sure, but I got this before that was released. So solid movie, a complete classic. Essentially, you know, you got this like this this woman and her mother-in-law are there. They, they live in like these like this like reed swamp almost and they are killing samurai who are coming back from war and they're taking their armor and their weapons and everything and selling it um the mother like the woman ends up getting in like a relationship with this guy and um the mother-in-law is really like i don't even know whether it's, if whether she's jealous of it or whether she's just like doesn't approve, whatever, but she ends up taking this Hanya mask that one of these samurai has, and putting it on, and, like, uh, trying to, like, scare the, 
the couple to be, uh, you know, just like scare them, whatever. But the mask ends up, you know, there's something a bit more going on there. And the mask ends up like sticking to her face and like won't come off. And, you know, n a nice, like minimalist, creepy little tale. And it's a really good movie. Again, a 10 out of 10. You can't go wrong with this movie. Um, what year was this, actually? Uh, 1964. So it wasn't, like, the birth of, like, like quote-unquote, like, J-horror, but it's pretty close. And it's, it's a classic for a reason. Again, it's on Masters of Cinema release and uh, Criterion. You know what you're getting. Sorry about that jump cut. Uh, the wonders of running out of memory. Uh, okay, so number two, we have Ring. And you notice I'm saying Ring and not Ringu or Ringu. You know, this is a hill I'm going I'm willing to die on. Um, this movie is called Ring. It's always been called Ring. It's never been called Ringu. Essentially, what you got there is, um, well, here, here's the thing. This movie is called Ring in Japanese. The English word Ring. I mean, let's see if I can. Like, even on the original Japanese artwork. Right there, you see? The Ring. That is what this movie is called. Essentially, calling it Ringu is the equivalent of you know, like mocking someone's accent. You know, you're you're writing it out phonetically. It's stupid. It's doing a disservice to the movie and the disservice to uh honestly people who are smarter than that. You know, and I think most people are smarter than that. But yeah, this movie was the birth of modern J horror. This kicked it all off, you know, before there was Juwan, before there was, you know, one missed call before there was, uh, you know, Tale of Two Sisters and everything. There was Ring, and it oozes atmosphere. I mentioned a bit back how I watched uh, the first uh, Juon again and how it still held up. Ring still hang holds up, you know, even though like a lot of the technology is now no longer like like viable. It still holds up, and it's genuinely scary, and it's a genuinely good movie for a rating. 10 out of 10. I love Ring. And like I said, I will die on that hill. This movie's called Ring. Fuck you if you call it Ringu. You're dumb. And you need to get a brain. God damn it. So, number one. This movie is a movie that I originally saw on DVD uh, and I completely fell in love with and as a result I picked up the UK DVD which had a longer cut and then eventually I picked up this the Criterion Blu-ray that is Kaidan or Kaidan however you prefer to pronounce it um, who directed this uh, Masaki Kobayashi. It's 183 minutes from 1965. This movie is gorgeous. It looks phenomenal. The stories themselves, it's an anthology movie, essentially. You know, it has move, it has stories that have been done in other things, like Tales from the Dark Side, uh, copied one of the stories and everything. It's many and varied, the different types of stories, but they're all great, and they look phenomenal, and this is Japanese horror at its best. I honestly believe that. I've, I've yet to see something that surpasses, like, kind of the class and the just all-around awesomeness of this movie i love it so much i go this goes beyond 10 out of 10 this is an s class film i've said before my use of s rank 
is something above 10, even if it's not like a perfect movie, a movie can be S rank for me, but this is an S rank film all around. Honestly, if, if someone was to say it isn't, if someone was to say this was like a B or a C tier movie, um, I wouldn't have a problem fighting that person. I'm just saying, I love Kaidan or Kaidan again, however you want to pronounce it. Beautiful movie, cinematography is gorgeous, and I just can't say enough good good shit about Kaidan or Kaidan. It it seems to depend on on who you who um. Who writes it down? But some people call it Kaidan. Some people call it Kaidan. But there we go. So that is my top ten Asian horror films. I love horror from from Asia. They they just seem to do. There's something about it. I don't know what it is, but they just seem to do it right. And I will honestly, the more the better. Bring 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 us more. Just saying. Okay, so now the time for people what people have been waiting for the the giveaway of the Blu-ray of um, the sadness. Hold on, let's just do that and just give this a good shake up. <laughs> okay, now time to pick a winner. Okay, and the winner is Horrific Nightmares JM. I'll be sending you a message. Um, just send me your address, and you will be getting Blu-ray copy of The Sadness. I've said before, one of the best horror movies of the past ten years, and also an Asian horror film. So again, you know, that's kind of saying something. But yeah, this has been a, a pretty fun uh, 31 days. I hope people enjoyed it. Uh, I'll make a playlist of all this when uh, the 31 days is over. But yeah, that's it for now. See you next time.